What's up, everybody? It's WWE Asylum 16 here, and I'm back with another Raw review. This is the, the October 19th episode of Raw. We had some big surprises. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, this Raw kicked ass. You could tell me all you want that, you know, uh, there's some, there some pointless matches in the show, but you know what? That's normal now. But either way, I'm just going to say this. Stone Cold returned. The Undertaker returned. Brock Lesnar was there as well. Ric Flair was there. Shawn Michaels returned. I mean, what more do we need? The Dudley Boys return after SummerSlam. What more do we need? <laughs> I really don't understand. What more do we need, guys? I really don't get it. What is with? Here, I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to show you right now. Someone tagged me in a post on Facebook saying that the raw ratings have been dropped again. I was like, what? I didn't believe it. And here's proof. It says right here, WWE raw ratings have been dropped again. Hitting their lowest number in 18 years. And I'm sure, I didn't read the article, but I'm sure the article's got to be fake, right? Please tell me the article's fake. You know what? I'm gonna t I'm gonna see right now what's going on. It says right here: WWE's ratings nightmare since Labor Day and the start of the NFL season continues. After the raw ratings plummeted to record lows in September and its audience shrank even further last week, WWE's flagship show has officially tied its lowest ratings number in 18 years. What? You gotta be kidding me, right? You're kidding, right? It says right here: according to the Torch. Monday's episode of Raw featuring appearances from WWE legends Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Nature Boy Ric Flair, and Shawn Michaels, not to mention a show opening featuring Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker, popped a 2.21 rating. The number matches a 2012 Christmas Eve episode for the lowest Raw rating since the mid-1990s. Mid what? This episode was up against a huge Monday Night Football. I don't really watch that. That featured not only big market teams in Philadelphia and New York, but the debut of the new trailer for Star Wars The Force Awakens. I heard that trailer was really good. Uh, the episode featured three six-man tag team matches and the tease of a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion in the main event. The show started off strong with 3.6 million viewers in the first hour. That was really good. But then fell to 3.3 million in, in hour two and way down to 3.1 million in hour three. That's a 13.3% drop from hour one to three. And the biggest one of... Th Three drop into the rating slide again. The good news: there aren't any more Star Wars trailers, <laughs> at least not for this one. Okay, um, so what does that even mean? So basically, they're saying that article stating that hour one was awesome, hour two was all right, and then hour three was just eh, it was all right. So basically, hour one was the best, hour two was decent, and hour three was all right. The point is, you still had over 3 million people watching Raw. Okay, who cares if uh, 300 p people stop watching? It doesn't matter. You still got 3 million other people watching. That's incredible. I mean, what more do we need? The fact that Stone Cold... I'm going to say this again. The fact that Stone Cold returned, Undertaker returned, Brock Lesnar returned, Shawn Michaels returned. I mean, I'm telling you. The list keeps going on and on. How many more legends do we need to return to Raw? <laughs> I really don't know what's going on. Why do the ratings keep dropping? Is it because of the pointless matches? Is it because of the pointless segments that kick off Raw, like the 15-minute 15 uh, 15, uh, minute promos or segments or whatever the hell you call them? Is it that? Because clearly I don't know what the hell other else it is. I really don't know uh, what other thing is dropping the ratings. I mean, yeah, I can understand that if a uh, superstar comes out to start off the show, like Seth Rollins or The Authority, and they kick off the show with like a 15-minute promo before even ma before even the first match of the night, okay, I could get that. That might get a little boring. Boring, But if they're announcing like some big matches f that are happening on Raw or on Pay-Per-View or SmackDown or some sort, okay, then I'm entertained. I'm ready to see what's going to happen. I'm ready to see what's going down. But if you're just if they're just sitting there talking about the fans or talking about like stuff that happened in the past, you know what I mean? And there's no point of them being on the show. Well, at least not until the main event. Kind of like um, how last week 
when um, when Raw was in Chicago, when it was here in the Allstate Arena, when uh, Seth Rollins didn't show up until like the end of the night. Basically, everybody's been saying that the champion um, should show up not until the main event. Like, basically not show up until the end of the show. Which I would kind of get, but... You know, it, um, the, the authority segments backstage, uh, I, could, I could get that Seth Rollins would be there because he's a champ. He's their champ, okay? But... I will agree. I will agree for a fact that the 15-minute the boring promos need to stop. Just gonna say that. But, like I said, if it's an awesome promo about, like, some... F- really good matches are going to happen on the show or in the pay- or some really good matches are going to happen in the pay-per-view then I- okay then I then I'm excited to see but not more not much to say um f- um uh, not much to say more for that I'm not going to tell you guys everything that happened on Raw but I'm just going to say that John Cena and Dudley Boys fought the New Day again eh I mean, the match was alright until the New Day won again. Um, wh- why are you making the Dudley Boys lose the new- to the New Day? I really don't understand that. It seems like the Dudley Boys are going to take the titles for sure at Hell in a Cell Sunday. They have to. Because if they lose again to the freaking New Day, I don't know what, what much more they're going to do with the Dudley Boys. They've only been in the WWE since their return. They've only been back for about, about like, a month or a half or so, or even two months, the point is, you gotta make the Dudley Boys, you gotta give the Dudley Boys more, they deserve better, not even, not only are they gonna win the tag team championship, but I believe they deserve, um, some single runs too, like, when Bully Ray was in TNA, he got a, he got a, That something. Oh, I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. No, really. So, um, the point is the Dudley Boys deserve better. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, what the hell happened on, what the hell else happened on Raw besides, uh, okay, so I talked about that. I didn't even talk about the beginning of the show. I only talked about the returns. The show started off strong. With the return of Stone Cold Steve Austin showing up on his first Raw in over four years. Um, and then he um, he introduced The Undertaker. And then Brock Lesnar showed up afterwards. So we went from Stone Cold Steve Austin to The Undertaker to Brock Lesnar within the first 15 minutes of the show. And Undertaker and Brock Lesnar had a, conf- have a confrontation along with Paul Heyman. Uh, bef- this is their last final confrontation before Hell in a Cell. Taker called Brock to the ring, and he said this one thing, this one quote, um, which very, very, which is very, very strong. What he said was that um, when you take everything away from a man, then that man ends up fighting with nothing to lose. Strong words from The Undertaker. And that's when Brock was going to come in the ring and they were going to fight again before the pay-per-view. But it didn't happen because Brock walked away. He's just going to wait for Sunday. He's just going to wait to take Taker out on Sunday and inside this hell in a cell. <coughs> I really think that match is going to be... Um, people are saying it's not going to be as good as the other Hell in a Cell match they had in 2002, I believe. Because that match kicked ass. It's not going to be the uh, as awesome as as that one, but it's going to be something, you know? It, it's going to be uh, 
a one, one hell of a match. I, I, I'll guarantee you that. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it'll, it'll be one hell of a match, but um, it's not going to be as good as the 2002 one, one for sure. Um, later on the show, you had Shawn Michaels uh, come out, and he, he um, was talking about the two Hell in a Cell matches, and he, he, if you guys didn't know, he mentioned on Raw, for those who didn't watch Raw, he mentioned on Raw that, uh, Shawn, that he, Shawn, him, himself, Shawn Michaels, was the first ever man to ever step foot inside Hell in a Cell with The Undertaker. And then he mentioned Undertaker is coming back to, in the cell one more time against Brock Lesnar. And this is going to be the final time Taker and Lesnar are ever going to feud. I would hope. Um, and then he was talking about the Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt Hell in a Cell match. <laughs> he was saying that the this match would actually tear the roof off the place. I mean, it could. It, I mean, that, it's not going to be as good as the one from last year between Ambrose and Rollins. That match kicked ass. In fact, I just saw that match again. Um, I think it was like, yeah, last Sunday. I literally just saw that match again last Sunday because they were showing um, Hell in a Cell 2014 on the on the WWE Network. It was live, so I figured I'd watch it again just because of the awesome uh, main event between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose because that match kicked ass. You're never going to have another Hell in a Cell match like that one where, the, where freaking... One guy likes to start on top of the cell, but the other guy is just telling him to come back down, and then he sends his security back up. Like, the point is, this match is not going to be as good as Ambrose and Rollins was. Because Ambrose and Rollins, they started on top of the cell. And then, like, the match never started until they got into the ring. <coughs> the match didn't start um, until Ambrose and Rollins were taking... Uh, they were going to be taken out of the arena on stretchers, and I was going to be on the show. But then Ambrose, uh, I don't know how the hell he did it. He got up. He fell like a 20 feet. Not even. He he was a little lower, but him and Rollins fell, uh, I would say, about 15 feet. And they both crashed through both announce tables, which was sick. One hell of a spot that was. And then Ambrose just coming. Just his resiliency from Ambrose. It was crazy, man. I freaking love Ambrose. So, yeah, that was awesome. And then just have him putting Seth Rollins through tables during the match. After Rollins already taken so much. Same with Ambrose. I mean, these guys tore the roof off the place. They kicked ass. The match was phenomenal itself. But I'm not going to talk much more about uh, Hell in a Cell 2014. I'm talking much more about Hell in a Cell 2015. Either way, I think Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt is going to be alright. It's not going to be... Eh, it's not going to be the best, but I think it's going to be an alright match. Unless they want to come up with some big spots in the match. Who knows, we'll see. I just hope they don't boo Roman at Hell in a Cell. I, hope, I really hope they don't. Uh, whatever. Then Rick Fl oh, So then later in the show, Ric Flair comes out. <coughs> That's when Roman Reigns came out. And then Bray Wyatt came out. And then um, that's when they showed the return of Eric Rowan. No one cared, like I said in the last video. No one cared that Eric Rowan's back. The crowd didn't care whatsoever. Um, the Wyatt family is just basically a, str a stronger faction now that Rowan's back. But the question, we're, the question is that we're all asking is, where the hell is Luke Harper? Where in the hell was Luke Harper at? Braun Strowman was there. Bray Wyatt was there, and Eric Rowan was there. Where the hell was Harper at? I don't know. Um, I'm just telling you, once he uh, comes back, I don't know who the hell's going to stop the Wyatt family there. I'm not saying Ambrose and Reigns are going to lose. Like I'm not saying that uh, they're not strong enough to take out the Wyatt family. They are. They really are. But they need at least one more guy. They had Randy Orton, but... He's got another dislocated shoulder, thanks to, I think, I, I believe that's something to do with Luke Harper. I don't know. But Michael Cole was saying that um, Randy Orton was supposed to show up in the Mexico live tours on, like, the weekend, but he never showed up because he, he, uh, he injured his shoulder again. And then later, he, they, uh, Michael Cole revealed that he uh, 
had more problems with his shoulder. And then later um, on Facebook, uh, after, the WWE didn't post it, but I saw something saying that the owner Randy Orton did indeed lo dislocate his shoulder, so he's going to be out for a few months. <coughs> this year really hasn't been that good for Orton. Or Randy Orton d deserves a lot better, just like the Dudley Boys. He deserves a lot better. He's been injured too many times this year, to be honest. 2015 is not his year. It really isn't. <laughs> Let me talk about the Shield Y Family room match real quick. That was one hell of a match. Roman Reigns did that crazy ass dive over the top rope after the match was over. Phenomenal. Ember's trying to beat up Braun Strowman with the candlestick, and then the Braun Strowman broke the candlestick in half. That was hilarious. Um, and then Seth Rollins is showing up. Oh my God, the crowd's going. The crowd was going absolutely nuts. I freaking loved it. The show was awesome. I'm not gonna talk much more about the show because I'm gonna go. I really gotta go do stuff. So I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, peace out.